Good morning. Today. Today, today, today. Today, we are going to discuss acceleration. So let's commence operations. So for those of you following along in your notes, please turn to this page here. Average acceleration. It's the ratio of the change in velocity to time. Describes how quickly an object is changing its velocity. So there's our official formula for acceleration. Please fill that in your notes. Delta V over delta T. Delta, remember, means a change. The unit for acceleration is meters per second per second. And notice, because acceleration is a vector, and that's what this symbol means, it's a vector. It involves velocity, and velocity is a vector. That means that a direction is required. One can show that meters per second per second is the same thing as meters per second squared. Delta V. What does it mean? Well, it means the change in velocity. Where V2 is the final velocity and V1 is the initial velocity. Now, for there to be a change in velocity, either the speed of the object could change, or the direction, or both. So if we go back to this picture now of a very famous basketball player dunking a ball. In this situation, this person is undergoing acceleration. Why is that? Well, at this point, they're probably running down the court, and when they begin to leap, their direction is changing. The person is going from a motion that is traveling him forward to a motion that's traveling not only forward, but upwards as well. And so at that very moment, when he begins to lift off the court, we say he is accelerating. In addition, what we'll learn in a future video is that while he is in the air, he is also accelerating due to the force of gravity. That's for a future video. Now, let's say you were told that your car, for example, has an acceleration of four meters per second per second. What does that actually mean? How would you explain that to a child who doesn't understand the term acceleration? What it means is this. Every second, if it was a car, the speed of the car would increase by four meters per second. That's what it means. And if you really understand that, then you'll never need a formula to manipulate acceleration questions. And so imagine we have this car initially moving at 11 meters per second. Every second, the speed of the car increases by four meters per second. So what does that mean? One second later, what would the new speed of the car actually be without using any formula? just by using this simple understanding that every second the speed of the car increases by four meters per second. Well, one second later it'd be 15, 11 plus four. And another second later, what would it be? 19, 15 plus four. And another second later it would be 23. So simply by understanding what 4 meters per second per second means, every second the speed of the car increases by 4 meters per second, you don't need a formula to figure out simple analysis of the motion of a car. So what does negative 6 meters per second per second mean? Well, it's the opposite. If a positive means the car is speeding up, in this case, the car would not be speeding up, it would be slowing down. We really don't use the term deceleration in physics. A car is always accelerating 
or an object is accelerating whenever its speed or direction changes. So in this situation, if we say this car, for example, has an acceleration of negative six. Notice I didn't use the term deceleration. We use the term acceleration in physics, whether it's speeding up or slowing down. Well, if this car starts off at 18 meters per second, and every second the speed of the car decreases by six, well, one second later, its new speed would be 12. And another second later, its new speed would be six. And of course, another second later, it would come to a stop. Here we have this picture in your notes. And you may be wondering, how was this picture actually made? Well, here's the video. Happened so quick, I'll show that to you again. It's a video of a car slowing down. And essentially what we've done is we've removed images. If we play this video frame by frame and then extract these images and then put these images all together in one image, this is what we get. So notice every 0.2 seconds I extracted one of the images, put them all together, and this car specifically has constant acceleration and it's slowing down. So the car slows down and has constant acceleration. And notice in one of these pictures what's happening to the gap. Well, notice the gap is getting smaller and smaller because the car is slowing down until the gap is almost non-existent at the very end from one picture to the next. So this is what acceleration looks like when a car is slowing down. Let's see what it looks like when an object is speeding up. Let's try that again. So this rocket has an acceleration well over of 100 meters per second squared. That acceleration lasts for a very short amount of time. Let's see if we can play it frame by frame. And there we get ignition. And notice the gap from frame to frame is steadily increasing. And that's evidence that the object is speeding up. Look at that gap. Small gap, next picture the gap gets bigger from where the rocket was to where the rocket is, and that gap gets larger and larger. Sadly, this rocket, well, let's see what happened to this rocket. Six minutes later. Right there. You can see it. It's just stuck in a couple of branches. There's the rocket. And just to give you an idea of how high this actually is, this is a tree. And it must be a good, oh, it must be a good 40 feet in the air. Oh, wow. You can actually see it in great detail, just where it's lodged. Maybe it'll come down by itself. Come on, come down. Come down. The rocket did not come down, sadly. Let's look at our first example. Agent 001 jumps into his Viper and immediately guns it to 40 kilometers an hour. Agent 001 follows all speed limits and motor vehicle laws. If the average acceleration is 7 meters per second squared, which is 7 meters per second per second, how long does it take 001 to reach that speed? Hmm. Let's see. So our goal is to get time. Well, this really isn't indicated in the problem. However, one can assume that when Agent 001 enters a car, the initial speed of that car would be zero. So we denote that as V1. 
the one standing for initial. The final speed is 40 kilometers per hour. And immediately you may identify this problem. Here we have the unit kilometers per hour. However, the acceleration is in meters per second squared. That's an issue. And so in the previous video, we discussed converting kilometers per hour into meters per second. And the magic factor was 3.6. And so when we divide by 3.6, this is the final speed in meters per second. Remember that V2, the 2 stands for final speed. Here's our acceleration of 7 meters per second per second, which is the same thing as 7 meters per second squared. And so we're going to use this formula here. Go ahead. Give it a try now. Well, let's see how we work through with this formula. We substitute our values. 7 goes for our acceleration. The final speed is 11, and the initial speed is 0. We cross multiply our delta t. 7 delta t equals 11.1, .1, and then we divide. If we consider significant digits, the answer is 2 seconds with significant digits. Now, does this make sense? 1.6 seconds or 2 seconds, does it actually make sense? Well, recall that every 1 second its speed increases by 7. So at 0 seconds, it's 0. 1 second later, it'd be 7. 2 seconds later, 7 plus 7 would be 14. So it does make sense, because the car only has to hit 11.1 .1 meters per second, not 14 meters per second. Example 2. Two cars are initially traveling at 25 meters per second. Both cars apply their brakes and come to a stop. A Dodge Stealth coasts to a stop in 20 seconds, whereas a G37 rapidly comes to a stop in 4 seconds. Calculate the acceleration for each car. Go ahead, pause the video now, try this out. Okay, hopefully you tried that. So for the Stealth, we know the time. We know the initial speed is 25 meters per second, that's called V1. And of course, the object is coming to a stop. That's the final speed, that's V2. So we're solving for acceleration here. And here's our formula for that. We're going to substitute our numbers. Final speed is 0, initial speed is 25, and we're dividing by 20. We get an answer of negative 1.25 meters per second squared, or with significant digits, only negative 1. The negative should make sense. Whenever an object is coming to a stop or slowing down, typically the acceleration is a negative acceleration. Go ahead, try the G37 for yourself. Repeat the exact same steps, with the exception that the time is not 20 seconds, it's only four seconds for the G37. Let's look at example three. A car accelerates for 4,000 milliseconds and has a final speed of 72 kilometers per hour. Calculate the initial speed prior to accelerating. Please pause the video and try this out. All right, hopefully you tried this question. Here's the solution. Time. I always like to give my students time in units other than seconds. You have to be aware of converting the units. In this case, 4,000 milliseconds is 4 seconds because remember, 1,000 milliseconds is 1 second. We're looking for the initial speed. That's V1. Once again, I give you a speed that's not in meters per second, in kilometers per hour, and we have to convert so that our units are consistent. 20 meters per second is the final speed here, which is 72 kilometers an hour. And we're given our acceleration, which is 3 meters per second per second, or 3 meters per second squared. Well, substituting our numbers, and then remembering we have a 4 here, we're going to cross multiply that 4, 
3 times 4 equals 20 minus v1. We're trying to get the initial speed. 12 equals 20 minus v1. And sometimes students get all mixed up with solving this equation. But remember, every equation tells a story. And this equation is no different. It's saying that 20 subtract a number is equal to 12. Well, we all know that what that number has to be. 20 subtract 8 equals 12. So just look at the equation and ask yourself, what's the story it's telling us? Because I sometimes see students make errors at this point. If you just understand what the equation is telling us, you can reason what the answer will be. And the answer is 8 meters per second when you rearrange the formula. And so, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.